Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a three brush lineup. I'm going to take you through three brands tonight. We're going to do a little bit of a spray out with them so you can get to see what these are like. They're all on 0.2 needle and nozzle setup, so it's sort of equal field across the three. The brands that we've got tonight is the Segola X-Tech 100. Now I did a review on the X-Tech 100 with a piece of artwork recently on the channel and I absolutely loved it. Brilliant brush. We've got the next one is the Rich Pen 112A on a 0.2. Looks near enough identical to the Segola. And then we've got the Sotar 2020 Slim. These are all scallop airbrushes. Now, if you've not seen a scallop airbrush, I call them scallop airbrushes, is probably another name for them. But they've got a tiny little reservoir to the top. You haven't got a side feed or a top cup. You've got this small little reservoir where you can probably get about six or seven drops of paint in. But the beauty of these brushes and the style of these are, especially for detail, is you get full view of your artwork. You've got nothing in the way of your finger, at the front of your finger, because some cups slant quite far back and you can catch with your finger. So you've got none of that. You've not got a side feed, you've got a plug-in. You've just got this tiny little scallop on the top, like that, where you put your paint in. The Sotar is exactly the same. So a little bit about the brushes. Segola X-Tech 100 on a 0.2. Double action airbrush, really nice triggers on these. I find this brush very soft and silky smooth when you use it. So a really comfortable trigger. The trigger, I think this one is the highest up out of the three. This is probably on par with the Sotar on height from the body. They're quite sort of high up. You've got anodized back piece in red. And then I said it before in another video, the dial to the back is exactly the same as the Segola spray gun, the 4600 Extreme. They're the same sort of dial. So they've brought that sort of style across to their airbrush range. You've got a scallop in the body here, which I like again, because when you put your finger on these brushes, they're just really comfortable underneath here when you connect your airline in. Crown cap that you can take off. Visibility on the needle at the front is quite a bit on this one you've got quite a bit of needle exposure out the front so you can see nice and clear if you're getting tip dry when you spray them so that's the segola we'll move on to the rich pen 112a and you will find it basically looks identical to the segola just a silver body to the back you've got no adjust for your trigger so very basic but very lightweight Again, comfortable on your hand here, where you hold it. Trigger is a little bit lower down. Same sort of trigger top as the Segola, with like a grippy pad to the top, but a very nice, comfortable trigger. On all of these brushes as well, you can dial in your tension on your trigger. So if you like a softer trigger, you can adjust your tension on the back in here. You can do with all these brushes. So they're all sort of like basically running the same set up. The reservoir on the Rich Pen is slightly smaller on the opening to the Segola. So it's a smaller reservoir hole at the top. But you will, yeah, and I'd say as well, a little bit less paint. Without looking at the specs, the Segola's got a slightly bigger reservoir to the top for paint. Probably by about two drops. Same again, you can take the crown cap off and work with the crown cap on this. And the needle exposure on the Rich Pen is a little less. You've got a little less needle coming out the front. Moving on to the Sotar 2020. It's this one here. You don't get a crown cap on these. You get a big sort of rubber bung that sits over the front. You pull that off and then you've instantly got exposure to your needle. Again, with the Sotar, very little needle exposure. This is the one with the least needle exposure out the front. So it can be quite hard to see if you've got tip dry, but I find with this brush, it's very rare you sort of get tip dry with this brush. Small reservoir to the top again. Few drops of paint in that one. This, sort, this one's sort of quite a wide reservoir on the top, so easy to put your droplets. If you're going straight out the bottle, you can sort of just tip it straight into it nice and easy. You're not sort of got to really like 
stand over it and like hope for the best. You've got enough room in there to put the nozzle of your paint into the top. So comfortable again. Triggers on these I find really nice. They're quite a big trigger on this. So you've got plenty of room for your finger and they slightly sit slanted to the front. So when you put your finger on the top, it's a very comfortable brush to get on with. You've got a piece of plastic body here. This screws on, you take your air connect off and this piece can come on and off the brush. There's a little Allen key sort of screw that sits to the back of that that you tighten up and it just sort of locks it in place. This is the only brush that I find out of the three that we're looking at tonight is the fiddly one. I'd say it's the fiddly one for the back piece because you can take your needle straight out the back. So on this, you've got a cutaway on the body. You undo your chuck like that and then you would slide your needle out. So it's just something I'm not sort of used to. That self locates in, slide to the front and then you would do your chuck up by keeping your body on the back. So you permanently keep the body on the back but you can take the needle out. You've got an adjuster to dial in your trigger. So if you like dialing in your trigger, you can do that on this brush and work off a dial at the back. But I always use these fully open and that's what the test will be tonight. These will all be fully open because the Rich Pen doesn't have an adjuster. So I'll open all the triggers up fully. So I've got full trigger movement, but a very nice brush by Badger is the Sotar 2020. We will do a little test with these. I'm not gonna do sort of like artwork with these. I'm just gonna do some dots, some lines, a little bit of backed off shading with all three brushes and give you my opinion on each one for sort of airflow. We'll run them all at 20, 25 PSI down the main line. So all the brushes will run at 25 PSI. I'll open the MAC valve upon the airline. So we've got a clean 25 coming through every brush. We'll see what they're like at 25 and then we will just sort of drop it down to say 10. We'll, we'll drop it straight down to 10. Same paint mix throughout the brushes and we'll just see how these brushes handle on them two different PSIs with the same paint in all three. So we'll move over to the easel, get set up, chuck some paint in these and we will start off with the Segola. See you in a minute. Right guys, we have got the compressor fired up. I've got a blank piece of sort of white cartridge paper. So this paper is quite forgiving. It's quite absorbent. So we're gonna be running FW inks, 25 PSI on all the brushes. We've wrote Segola on the top, doing do a little pass with the Segola, Rich Pen and the Sotar. We'll do some lines, go right down on detail on each one. I'll run 25 PSI on the Segola, do some lines, dots, a little bit of shading. I'll bring you in on the camera. Then we'll drop the pressure down and I'll do another little test the same. And just run these brushes all the same with the same paint mix, air pressures, and you just get to see which one you sort of prefer. And I'll just give you my sort of opinion on which one I prefer at the end of the video. So we'll hook the Segola up first. Quick connect to the bottom. So all these brushes are your standard airbrush quick connect to the bottom. 25 PSI. So the actual 25 coming out of this brush sounds quite sort of fierce at 25. You sometimes get this with different brushes, sort of the airspeed. Some of them sound a lot quieter, some of them sound quite fierce. So a little bit of the paint is the same mixed paint in all the brushes. Now you just put a couple of drops. It's literally a few drops in this brush. So we've got the painting. I'll move you in a little bit closer. Right guys, I hope that's you can see that. It's hard to do it when you're trying to spray and have a camera sort of, I'm having to put the camera sort of really close. So just pull the paint through on the Segola and we're just gonna go in and for one, tighten the need look because we've got paint instantly coming out. You'll sometimes get that. If you, if you do get that where you're, you press down on the trigger and you instantly get paint out, just need to reseat your needle. It's probably where a little bit of paint's built up from when you previously used it because we did use this in the other video and your needle's just slightly sitting back 
due to a dirty bit at the front. So, right, just get to grips with this trigger. Now, the triggers on the Sota on the Segolas are very, very accurate, guys. Try and get down a little bit smaller. This thing does get seriously down on your dots. Line work on the Segola is really, really small. As you can see. So this brush does get super down. We'll do a full pass. So that's the sort of full pass on the trigger. I'm trying to keep it so I've got enough room to do each one for you. Shading on this, I, I find the Segola really nice for shading. Atomizes really well. As you can see that there, you can just flick this brush and get really soft shading with it. So that's at sort of 25 PSI. We will do three full turns in on the Mac valve. So one, we'll go two, and then I'll do two full turns. That's probably around 15, 15 PSI. We'll drop that down two and a half, two and a quarter. That's a lot quieter now. Do the same again here. Do some little dots. So this runs really nice at low pressure as well. What you'll find is you've got to get your paint mix right. This bottle I've picked up with the FW inks I've got two bottles of black. One's an old one, one's a newer one. I think I've picked the old one up out of the two. So it's a little bit, I'd say grainy paint. But dropping the pressure down, consistent on the lines. And what I like about this brush is you only have to touch the trigger for the response. A little bit of tip dry. But nice for them tight details. So a nice brush for getting down on your detail work. You've got full view. That's the Segola. It gets really down for a point two, it does. Nice comfortable trigger. We'll just turn that air pressure back up, clean the brush out. We'll move on to the rich pen next and we'll do the same sort of test. Run it at 25, we'll do the full trigger, get down on some tiny little lines and dots and see how the rich pen is. Now the rich pen is basically the same sort of brush as the Segola, but I find the trigger on the Segola is a little, little more softer. So I've just tried to soften the rich pen up, just took the uh, back off and just soften the spring up to give it the same sort of tension few drops again, just pull that through, now we've got the same again on this, just reseat the needle, this is where I've cleaned them and not seated the needles back fully as I've cleaned them. So again, 
trigger response on the rich pen is really good. See on them little dots. Again, super down like the Segola. Lines again. You can get your hair lines. So basically they're all getting down about the same on consistency. I think the Segola hits the fine on the little fine lines just a little bit easier. It's, it's about the same what I'm getting it to with the consistency of this paint. Probably get a little bit finer down. Yeah, it's about the same. Fall back on the trigger. Same sort of passes as the Scola. And this is because they're sort of point twos across the board. Shading, again, really nice, just like the Segola. I find the rich pen a little bit lighter. But shades again, you get that nice soft gradient with it, like that. We'll drop the pressure down. Drop a little bit more painting because we've just sort of ran out of paint. Couple of drops, pull it through. This is on lower pressure and it just works a lot nicer on lower pressure. You can see really nice lines, consistent with this. Gets down some really tight lines. Flows really well, the Rich Pen. They are a lovely brush. I think any of the Rich Pens, I do own another one which is basically the same brush as this, but it's got like the little cup on the top. They just work really nice. Responsive triggers, Great for detail, nice little dagger strokes. You can see them little dagger strokes there. You feel confident with these when you're going up, especially when you're doing detail work and you want them tiny little like flick outs. You know you can hit them with this brush, no problems. You can rely on the trigger. You know that trigger's gonna work every time and be on point every time. This is getting super down on dots now. Yeah, very responsive trigger. It looks like my finger's moving quite a bit, but that's mainly, I'm just sort of pushing down and the, that's basically the pad of my finger moving sort of down and slightly back. But yeah, super down. And you can hit them nice, sort of every time. So the Rich Pen performs really well down low, same as this. They're getting the similar sort of details. I think the Rich Pen just flowed a little bit better. after using it. But now I've got comfortable with the brush. That was the first brush that I picked up, sort of come in the studio, cold, cold hands, and now I'm getting into the flow of it and I can just hit them things that I want to hit now. So we'll do another quick pass on the Segola in a minute, but if you are thinking of one of these, any of these three brushes I'd recommend guys, I really would. They're all on my shelf for a reason and I've brought them over the years because they are good brushes. These are made in Japan. Basically these are, I'd say, are water build quality, exactly the same 
as an iWatter. You can get an iWatter that is very similar to this, one of the old HP Bs, I think it is, that looks identical to one of these. So that's the Rich Pen. Get seriously down, nice and comfortable, lightweight, nice and clean, easy to clean as well. You've got no adjust, just nice and clean. You can wipe the body on them. Really, really nice. So we'll move on to, I'll just blast a bit of water through that. Just clean that through. We'll move on to the Sotar, which will just be here. Right, we'll drop some paint in the Sotar. Turn the pressure back up to 25 and just go in Now the triggers on these are very responsive. Just getting used to the SOTA, I think this needle wants locating. Yeah, I just find this one not as, it's getting to grips with it. Yeah, I think this one needs a clean. This needle is just, just give that a little wipe off. The actual needle's clean. Locate that up again. Because a lot of the time I don't use these brushes. I give them a quick clean through, they go back on the shelf and then they just come out now and again for either a review or if I want to use it one day. And when I come to use it, I usually give them a real good clean before I start. Right, that's better. So the Sotar gets down. It just seems like it's dragging off paint. When I take off the paint, it's just leaving a trail. Probably needs a good clean. Just run a bit of paint through it. Now, it doesn't get as down as good as the other two. Oh, we're getting down now. I think the other two get down a little bit easier. It is getting down. I think it just needs a little bit of a clean through on the front. Yeah, it don't get as down as tight as the other two. We're slightly getting it. It is getting down, but just not as easy as these two. We'll do a full pass. Puts the same sort of paint pattern down as these two, but these put it down softer. I find with the Sotar, it works better when you drop it down on pressure. See, now we're getting better down on the dots and instantly better down on the details, on the uh, lines. I think the Sotar runs better lower down. Can be quite fierce. But get super down again now. It's just that little sweet spot I think with the Sotar where you just gotta get it at the right air pressure. I was just fine with this. A nice brush, comfortable. So I find this one does work better. Lower down on pressure. Um, I mean, they're all getting down on the detail. 
all three of them are getting sorted down. I, th I think the rich pen coped with it the, the easiest, but I was cold hands straight on the Segola. Now I did use the Segola on a piece of artwork and I was sitting with that for a couple of hours and it was just incredible, the uh, Segola was. It's like all these brushes, you need them in your hand for a few hours. Doing these sort of tests, it's all well and good, like this is how it gets down. I can get the Sotar to perform better than this because I have done when I've sat with it for longer periods of time and I get on that trigger and get the paint dialed in right, I can really make the Sotar sing and dance, really can. Right guys, my opinion on the brushes. Now, I really don't like giving a, a brush review when we do sort of things like this because dots and lines, dots and lines, it's, to me, it's not working with the brush. I would rather do a piece of artwork with the brush and sit with the brush for three hours, get my paint mixes how I want them and sit with it. I think that's the best way of doing a review with a brush because then you get proper to grips with it. You dial in your pressures, you dial in your paint. Doing it this way is sort of like dot, 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 line, 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 and we all know what brushes can do. All airbrushes can get down on lines and dots. What I'm sort of trying to explain in this one for you is on how the how these performed between the three. We do, we've done different air pressures, trying them at 25. Now, the Segoda and the Rich Pen, out of all three, they work the best, them two, at 25. The Sotar is a little bit sort of blows back. It does push a lot of air out the front. You'll find the Sotar, I think, is better for backing off stuff if you're doing sort of slightly bigger stuff. If you're coming right down on smaller detail, these two will cope with it better. The Sotar, I'd say, if you're doing sort of big portraits, where you've not got that real tightness down, like say A4 size, if you're doing something, a portrait this size, Sotar will be lovely for that because you can drop the pressure down as we did, and that's when the Sotar comes alive, I think, when you sort of drop the pressure down, get your paint mix right, and you can sit with it and it works lovely because you're just taking that blow off the paper. You're not getting a lot of blowback. With these two, I'd find these would be better for going down on tighter stuff when you start bringing your art right down smaller. These sit more comfortable at 25 and they sit even better when they go lower, as we've seen here. They just really perform great, just dropping that pressure down. Flow really nice. All three brushes, are brilliant on trigger response. Can't, can't knock them on the trigger response. You just nudge it and it's there, the paint's there. The only thing that let me down tonight is the paint that I used. I've got two FW Blacks. I've got an old one and a new one. And I've picked the old one up tonight. Now, if, it, if you can see this, try and hold it to the light, you can probably see the grainy bits in that paint really hard to try and focus on that. But there are little bits of grainy chunks in there. So it wasn't great paint. And that's why I think these brushes sort of struggled a bit to release because it was a little bit grainy. It wasn't flowing really nice. But they did, they performed even with the bad paint. They were a little bit spitty and I could tell this was the paint. And then it sort of cleared on the end of this one, it cleared up and this one just flowed really nice. You could tell that there's no breaks, lovely and clean. There was a couple of breaks in this, but this is definitely the paint on all of them. A little bit of grittiness, but they did perform and they do get super down. So <clears throat> I don't want to say which one's the best because they're all good in their own right. And I've sat with these brushes I've sat with the Segola recently on an art piece of artwork and I think it's phenomenal. I know what the Rich Pen can do and I've sat with this on a piece of artwork in the past, brilliant. And I've sat with the Sotar on a piece of artwork and I absolutely loved it because I didn't get any tip dry with it. It just flowed nice with what I was working on and it was on two side panels 
that I painted with this on the Ford Focus. If you've seen that um, video, I used the Sotar on the Ford Focus pieces of artwork. I just really enjoyed the Sotar. Brilliant to work with. So I'd recommend all three. Price points, they're all sort of, they're all tipping that just over a hundred pound mark. If you're in the US, you'll pick up Badger a lot cheaper than you will in the UK. Uh, the Sotar for me cost me 128 for the Sotar. I have seen it cheaper. Rich Pen at the time when I got it, if you can still get them, I got the Rich Pen on a uh, special for 105 at the time. The Segola's coming in around, I think around 145. So for the price on all three, they're all worth the money. They really are for what you're getting. Brilliant trigger response, great detail. They're all sort of easy to clean. They all take the same sort of amount of paint, a few drops. So you're painting for a 10, 15 minutes and then you top it up. But they've all got that nice open front. So they all feel like that you're like sketching with a pencil because you've got full view. So when you go in, you can just see everything all round. You haven't got a cup here. So if you, you're working on a stroke coming back, you can just see where you're going. If you're following a line, you can see here. And that's what's nice about it if you work. You can see clear here all round. You've not got a side cup or a side cup sitting here or a top cup that's fixed to the brush. And that's what I like about this style of brush. They're very sleek and sort of discreet. They just feel like a little pencil in your hand when you're getting down on your artwork. So I hope this has helped and made you sort of mind upon what you want to go for. Any of them guys, pick any of them, you won't go wrong. So thanks for watching. Don't forget if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe, press the notification, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Cheers guys.